All right. To the stream, we are live, We're and live. we are having a wonderful time talking about two articles that he doesn't know that I'm going to bring up, and two articles that I don't know he's going to bring up. If that makes any sense, then keep on watching. If it doesn't, I'm going to go right into the first one, which I talked about on a phone call today, and I forwarded it over to you, and I hope you didn't steal the article. But New York City's medium home price has reached over a million dollars for the first time since 2018. So if people like myself that didn't do well in math, medium is taking the middle. Medium or and median? Not median. 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 Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the correction. But that's a good way to think about it. It is in it's the, the middle. middle. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason being is that there's been so much high-end de high development that it brought the average sales price up, but the average sales price is nowhere near what the medium, median home price is. So April, it reached a million dollars, a million fifty dollars, fifty thousand dollars for the first time since June. So that's a while ago. Now that we that's five years ago because we're reaching June right now. And we talked about the reasons behind it, but let me just give a couple more statistics if if I can. Please, because I would like to know. April 2023, 2100 listings went into contract. That is one third fewer than last year. What was last year? Low interest rates. So the amount of days on the market is... So you literally have... Lower interest rates. Lower half, almost. <laughs> That's really I what it comes down to. pretty far into it. They had already started. Yeah. yeah. But think... So they went into contract or they started negotiating before. Right. In other words, they locked it in mm -hmm. and then they went into contract. But think about that. One third less contracts, but the median price is higher. One third less contracts, the same amount of inventory, days on the market is almost the same as last year, 17 days less. But this is the last statistic, is that inventory across the nation, give you guys some love outside of New York City, is inventory in April was almost 46%, almost 50% less than April 2019. Almost 50% hmm. less, 50% less throughout the, so anyone that's talking about a recession or all this, Maybe in the commercial side, I don't even, th you know, that's that's all getting bought up, by the way, uh, or at least transferred. So that's, I went on a rant. What's your thoughts? What's driving this? We both know. What is it? What is Rents. driving it? Rents. Yeah. Rents. So I was thinking that's a good point you made because Need to the move. average is probably higher because of the new development sales and yeah. the higher prices on that. But the median would probably be from the smaller apartments. That's the most reflective of at a higher price. New York City is the median instead of the average. Because the average is brought up by a ninety million dollar townhouse that sells. And it's like that's one person that moved internationally, blah blah blah. Yeah. So okay. high rents are pushing everything up. Uh, we I took out a buyer yesterday. They put it up for sale, they put it up for rent. Guess what? Rent it went over the asking price on both apartments immediately. Literally for rent. For rent. In a hmm. condo. They put it up for sale. They put it up for rent. No both of them went over the asking price. Lower East Side in condominiums. These aren't rental buildings. They still have to go through the board process, pay the broker fee, pay the condo fees. So in one of the studios, it went for $4,500, a studio. It's crazy out there. Wow. Yeah. It must have been a nice one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, hmm. Where to start? Investment sales, buy when others are fearful. Commercial Observer, uh, pretty good article. There's been downward pressure on rent and vacancy is high in some sectors. In commercial. Uh, it's only area. Well, investment sales. Investment sales yeah. of what? Anything, anything in real estate. Residential. If we think back to the last financial crisis, property values bottomed out in New York in 2010. I often say to investors who are sitting on the sidelines today that if you bought a property in 2009, even though it would have gone down slightly in 2010, by 2014 or 15, you would have been thrilled with your 2009 cost basis as it was well below value at the time. So New York is always going to have investments. Investment sales volume is down, but uh, you know, there's plenty of investors out there that we talk to every single day. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one thing that, an article I'm not bringing up, 
is Japan has a massive amount of influx internationally coming in because of their low interest rates. So it's shifting a little bit from Europe and outside the United States to Japan, and one of their big sectors is actually commercial. So commercial, it listen, people always want it. It's just at the right price. Commercial is going to trade. It's at the right price. And it's the right interest rates. That's it. And if the interest rates are really good in Japan and they're welcoming investments, it's going to go up. Uh, it doubled, actually, the amount of investments in Japan. And in the U.S. and Europe, it went down slightly. So Money's got to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about money's got to go somewhere. PacWest, everybody's favorite bank right now. Shares jumped this week by 20% on Monday because they sold $2.6 billion worth of loans, real estate loans, real estate loans. So listen to this, $2.6 billion worth of real estate construction loans, construction loans in 74 real estate projects. So $2.6 billion worth of real estate it did not go to the normal people that we talk about, but it's interesting Where'd that they, uh, it went to a bunch of places that I probably, we probably never heard of, hmm. but it's going somewhere. In other words, construction loans are probably in demand. And this is very interesting. The loans on average, their interest rates were carrying or floating an average of 8.4% interest rate. Wow. Imagine an 8.4 construction loan interest rate. So they That's, paid 2.6 billion or they bought 2.6 billion? They sold loans. off. So who bought them? Did they buy them for 2.6 billion? Yeah. Or what did the, was the price that they got? Oh. You know, because then the, the loan, you know, they definitely got it for a very good deal. I mean, so it, so it was way. worth 2.6 billion. Yeah, so, so I don't they know what they bought, bought it for. It for. Like a tenth of yeah, and they pay. They paid a portion of that deal as um, I don't know some fee that I've never heard of. It was very interesting how they structured this deal. But I would say that's probably one of the most in-demand things. You already have the approvals. The construction's already under the way, and you are just going in and taking over an eight point four percent construction loan. Like that's probably one of the lower risk. As opposed as to commercial, as they don't fail. yeah. As long as they don't default, um, I would I would say you know, on average, seventy four projects. Some are going to break even. Some are going to lose money, but then some are going to make a ton of money. So just like with anything, that was from Reuters. So, mm. you know, obviously we we they actually brought up the flight of deposits that collapsed Silicon Valley Bank. Signature Bank and First Republic. So we don't want PacWest to do anything but stay in business and all the regional banks to stay in business. We can't consolidate and well, centralize. This is definitely a lifeline. Yeah. Went from what, $5 to $6 after being $70? Yeah. Yeah. 20% <laughs> jump. Nice little lifeline. Yeah. Maybe they'll be around. Uh, Sam Zell, real estate mogul, passed away. That is a legend in the real estate business so you couldn't get very far without hearing about him passing away at 81. Wow. Uh, great article about him in the Wall Street Journal if you don't know he was the grave dancer so he would go buy distressed properties in uh, Chicago was where he started and properties that nobody wanted and then made a lot of money off of them. So he's got a lot. He's the owner of Equity Residential, which you know is all over the city. There was a Gigantic very interesting company. article about uh, his portfolio, all the places that he owns, all the assets he owns. And I mean, he was in every different type of business. It wasn't even just real estate. Afterwards, he got into all these different uh, media and this and that. It, really, really great story. And since he, he has a good book, too. Uh, don't remember what it's called, but I listened to it because on audio, it was him speaking it. So it was in his like raspy voice, which was really good. I also saw him one time at a real estate seminar. Really brilliant guy. Uh, but I have to bring up this funny part of the article because he did start young. He started in his teens. In college was when he was buying all these properties and getting started on that. His taste for entrepreneurial and edgy and the edgy started young. 
As a preteen, he would buy copies of Playboy for 50 cents in Chicago while going to a parent-mandated Hebrew school at Yeshiva in the city. He resold the magazines to friends in the suburbs for triple the price. <laughs> I love that they included that. <laughs> so that Started was, off as a hustler, no yeah, pun intended. It, exactly. Yeah. It really goes to show that it is a uh, you know, hustler. Yeah. Uh, well, to build that portfolio, you have to be smart and just... Yeah, and he is very smart. Yeah. Contrarian, you know, uh, brilliant investor. Yeah. Uh, before we end, I have a bonus article because this was just so silly that I had to grab it. CNN, New York City is sinking due to the million plus buildings. <laughs> sinking like physically. <laughs> yeah. This gradual process could spell trouble for the city around which the sea level has been rising at more than twice as fast as the global rate and is projected to rise between eight and 30 inches by 2050. <laughs> sinking so, city risks. So the city mystery. sinking or the water's rising? Because of all these heavy buildings, it's pushing down the <laughs> land. Oh my gosh. You better stop building. We, we actually might have to start destroying buildings. This isn't buildings. sand. <laughs> this is bedrock. This is bedrock. Can't you feel it? Can you feel it? I feel oh like we've sunk gosh. about a 20th yeah, of a centimeter. That's like an intern's article that was approved. I mean, it's unbelievable actually how long this is. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chat somebody's, GBT. somebody's yeah. job was to write this. Yeah, and write then, a three you know, thousand and, and the word scarier article. Scarier part is the amount of comments. I mean, it's just like how much time do these people have? Yeah. Do well, this? enough to uh, print out the article, bring it up. I couldn't and sleep talk last about. night. I mean, I was thinking about <laughs> sinking yeah, into you, oblivion. You I mean, started I on the tenth floor, and now you're on the second. If you're looking to sell your property, <laughs> you better call us because you got to get out of here. If you're on, if you're on anything lower than the fiftieth floor, you're going to be underwater. No pun intended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first floor is going to have to take an elevator to the 40th floor to get out of their apartment. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I think that will have to be the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the articles. We got a wide range today. I came in serious. Eric is, Eric's dropping some bombs. Uh, if you guys like this, uh, leave a comment. Any articles that you want us to uh, bring up. We're always fun, interesting. Uh, have a great day. We'll be live next week.